All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. In this one, I wanted to do a quarterly recap of the Jets season so far. I know technically it's not really a quarter into the season because the NFL added that extra game on the back end. I mean, there's 17 games as opposed to 16, but you guys get the gist, right? Quarterly recap. Let's take a look at this Jets team. There's been some awesome, awesome wins. There's been some brutal losses. There has been a laundry list of pros but there's also been a couple cons as well. We're gonna cover it all, let's dive in. So before we dive into the good and the bad so far, what we've seen from the Jets, I wanted to talk about a couple of the team rankings, both offensively and defensively. Let's start on offense first, okay? Overall, statistically speaking, the Jets are not a good rushing team, but I do think the bad numbers are a reflection of the offense in Mike LaFleur's play calling, okay? Because at the end of the day, the Jets are 32nd in rush play percentage, right around 29 to 30% of the time they are running the football, okay? Again, that's dead last in the entire National Football League. If you're dead last in actually handing the football off, the rushing statistics will probably not be that good, okay? On the other hand, we take a look at the passing game. It's funny because the Jets lead the NFL in passes per game, right? Pass attempts per game, the Jets are number one. Because of that, the Jets are fourth in the entire NFL in passing yards per game. Okay, so obviously it's a pretty small sample size, but through the first four weeks of the NFL season, this team has relied heavily, heavily on the pass game. I expect uh, next quarterly recap that we do, those numbers to kind of equal out a little bit, the passing attempts to go down, the rushing attempts to go up, but one interesting stat that I feel like, I mean, these two statistics go hand in hand here. We just talked about one, the Jets being fourth in passing yards per game, but the Jets are 29th in overall completion percentage. Think about that for a second. The Jets are a top five team in racking up yardage per game, and we're, we're literally bottom four in the NFL in actually completing passes. We have seen tons of drops, tons of drops. Guys are dropping passes left and right, I feel like every single week. Brees Hall, Tyler Conklin, Corey Davis has had drops, Garrett Wilson has had drops, Elijah Moore has had drops. There is a drop problem going on with the Jets. If we could even get, if we could get that number up from 29th in the league to 23, 22, 20th, somewhere in that range, right? We're not asking these guys to go be, you know, world beaters here. We're not asking them to go be Super Bowl champions immediately, right? Go break the record book, go break offensive records. But if we could just slowly but surely increase that number, complete the football a little bit more, put it in play, not only are we just going to rack up more yards, which is a positive thing, but the Jets will be building momentum throughout the course of the game. Everybody's stats will go up, and we're also going to be theoretically controlling the ball, controlling the time of possession, uh, controlling the game with those added completions. Okay, now we take a look at the defense side of the football. The Jets are only allowing 3.7 yards per rush which is sixth in the NFL, and they're only allowing 108 rushing yards per game, which is 13th, okay? So in the upper section of the league, better than average, for sure. Unfortunately, though, against the pass, they haven't really been able to duplicate the same success in the running game, okay? Teams have exploited the Jets' safety position. Uh, at times, the Jets have just failed to get after the opposing quarterbacks. They've had all day to sit back and, you know, make throws, complete passes. So, you know, the pass game has suffered, but overall, the Jets, I, it's kind of funny because offensively, it's just so, like, just so, like, polar opposites. And then defensively, the stats are more averaged out. Okay, so when we take a look at some of the positives that this Jets team has put on display through the first four weeks, I gotta be honest with you, there has been quite a lot. Let's start with the obvious one, the record. Two and two at the end of September. I, or really, I guess the start of October here. I mean, that is crazy to me. We, I mean, everybody here is a Jet fan. We all saw when the schedule first came out, everybody was dreading the first half. I, I mean, and granted, you know, we still have some tough games to play, and, you know, only time will tell how this Jets team is going to look. But if you would have told me before the start of the season that the Jets in the first four weeks will finish all against AFC North teams as a 2-2, two and two, as a 500 football team, heading into Miami, sorry, heading into MetLife Stadium to take on Miami in a massive divisional game, the biggest game so far of the season for this Jets team, I would have said, 
I doubt it. I don't think that's going to happen. I was thinking one in three. Okay, and I know it's only a game difference, but still, this is the NFL. One game, it's all it takes, right? It, one game means a lot. It means a ton in the National Football League. So for the Jets to, to be sitting here right now as a 500 football team, New England can't say that, right? There's a lot of teams in football that cannot say that they're a 500. I feel really good about the position that the Jets are in. Again, home game, taking on the AFC East rival Miami Dolphins, a team that has started really, really hot so far. I love the position that the Jets are in right now. Positive number two, the cornerback play. I know that's kind of specific here. But man, DJ Reed, Michael Carter, first round pick, top five pick, Sauce Gardner, these guys have all been producing. Let's dive into the numbers here. DJ Reed, he's allowed eight completions over 18 total targets. He's given up 73 receiving yards over those four games, which is crazy. No touchdowns. He has a pick and a pass breakup. Sauce Gardner, on the other hand, has given up nine completions over 19 targets, has allowed 101 receiving yards. He has unfortunately given up a touchdown, but you know what? It is what it is. He's a rookie at the end of the day. Hasn't recorded an INT yet, right? I'm going to say yet. I also got a knock on wood here, but he's recorded four pass breakups as well. I think the cornerbacks have looked really, really good despite opposing offenses having success in the pass game. I mean, it's not just one-on-one -on -one matchups. It's not just corner versus wide receiver. When we're talking about the pass game overall, we're factoring in tight ends. We're factoring in running backs. We're factoring in quarterbacks extending plays we're factoring in the safety position and linebacker uh, linebacker coverage ability so it's not just on the corners I know the passing numbers overall don't look that good for the Jets defense like we alluded to before but I mean man these corners to, in my opinion great great fits for the defense I love both guys all right positive number three here all of the young players, I, I guess I shouldn't say all, but the majority of the young players, in other words, the core players of this Jets franchise, look pretty good, right? I'm talking about guys like Elijah Vera Tucker, Garrett Wilson, Michael Carter, Jermaine Johnson, Sauce Gardner, we just talked about him. Elijah Moore is another guy, statistically speaking, hasn't really put up a ton of you know tangible numbers catches touchdowns and all you know that kind of stuff but he's getting open a lot it, it just really comes down to the quarterback finding him the quarterback hitting him the football and also understanding that the jets have a lot of mouths to feed on offense right we got a lot of pass catchers we got a lot of weapons finally right it feels like it's been forever since i've been able to say that but um you know i know elijah moore hasn't racked up a ton of yard a uh, ton of yardage ton of touchdowns stuff like that but I mean, he's getting open. He is getting open. It's just up to the quarterback to find him. And then last but not least, positive number four here, it does really feel like the momentum is trending in the right direction. I know the Jets are coming off a win, but it, it goes a little further than that. It just seems like everybody is bought in. Everybody trusts each other within the locker room. And these guys are really trusting the coaching staff as well. Okay, and that's really, really important if you want to have a team that can compete in the playoffs to win a Super Bowl eventually. You know, how, how can you win a Super Bowl if the players don't trust each other? right it just doesn't happen okay so the jets have the building blocks they have the core in place only time will tell how this team is going to you know look as the weeks go on here but um i, I really really like the momentum moving forward okay so it hasn't all been perfect right the jets are two and two and that is a really really good position but there are a couple things that have worried me so far one big question mark that i'm going to say uh, second but first the Jets start slow, and when they start slow, they tend to lose the game. Okay, we can look at these past four weeks. I mean, let, let's even point to the Steeler game. First quarter, I mean, at one point, they had a pretty, you know, a two-possession lead in the Cleveland Browns game. That was back and forth. It was a back and forth game. It liter literally came down to the end. But against Baltimore, against Cincinnati, it just felt like early on, the opposition decked the Jets in the face, and there was just no coming up from it, right? They just couldn't get out of their own way. It felt like the game was over. So it's all about starting fast. I know it's cliche. I know in a perfect world, every team, all it doesn't even matter the sport, soccer, baseball, whatever, every team wants to start fast. Every team wants to have success in the first quarter, uh, in the first period, what have you. 
you want to look good to start the game off. You don't want to be out there throwing picks, punting the football, three and outs and stuff like that, turning the football over. Nobody wants to be in that position. But I think right now with the Jets and, you know, maybe it's because they have a bunch of young core players. Maybe it's because the coaching staff is pretty young. But I feel like once they do start off slow, that's kind of the game. And I do not like being in that position at all. And so really my last negative here for this Jets team, and to be honest with you, uh, I, try to, I, I try to turn a blind eye to it, but I got to be realistic. I have to be objective when I'm breaking this Jets team down. I feel, or really my fear moving forward, you know, when I'm thinking about teams like Green Bay in Green Bay, Miami in Miami, Buffalo, New England, Denver, the Jets have, they, they got some pretty tough teams on their schedule. Um, I mean, look at Jacksonville. I mean, that, that team is, we got them later in the season, but they look like they have really gotten a lot of things figured out. My fear with this Jets team is that they haven't really gone out and just dominated from start to finish. I, I don't want this to actually be a fact here, but I got again, I have to be honest, it is somewhat of a question mark floating in the back of my mind. I'm trying not to think too much about it, but can the Jets hang in with a good football team that doesn't beat themselves? You know, we look at that Browns game. Again, it was back and forth. Cleveland had a lot of success, you know, in the running game and protecting Brissett, and he was completing a lot of passes. But the Jets did some nice stuff, too, with Joe Flacco at the helm. But it didn't really turn in a it didn't really completely shift into the Jets favor until what the last minute and 30 minute and 45 seconds where the Browns had a busted coverage on the back end Jets get a Hail Mary to Corey Davis recover the onside kick and go all the way down the field and it's just a complete implosion by the Browns and then in the Steeler game you know that's a Steeler team that turned the football over four times penalized eight times dropped passes all over the place dropped an INT it was a sloppy game from Pittsburgh no TJ Watt uh, quarterback change midway through I mean I want to see the Jets go out there and just go out there and just humiliate the opponent show them we are the better football team and just look competent not have mistake filled football for all four quarters so I'll leave it there those are my positives and negatives so far through the first quarter of the season let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section where do you stand with this team again I could not be happier uh that this team is you know 500 and I know it might sound a little weird for me to say that but hey I mean I'm hoping for seven wins this season seven eight nine wins that's my that's my goal that's my goal. And to be sitting here right now, uh, first week of October with two against two good teams in Cleveland and Pittsburgh, I'll take that every day of the week. Okay, so let me know your thoughts. And as always, go Jets.